Good afternoon guys, welcome back to the channel. Chris Dennis here, putting specialist in short game performance coach. Today we're out here at Woolly, I would say Royal Woolly, which we can do. We Royal can Wool. call it Royal Woolly, can't and we're we? with James Robinson and today we're going through three bunker shots that everybody fears and we're going to show you the different ways we can set up and play these shots to give you options and make it easier for yourself. So I fear this one more than any. This is the awkward one, this is a 70 yard bunker shot which as we know nobody really likes do we go with a full wedge do we play our 60 do we go down to a pitching wedge i'd fancy i wouldn't fancy a 60 here you'd have to properly nip it and get ball first yeah and that's it and what do we do do we want to catch the ball clean do we not so james has come in here with his 50 degree so although he could probably get a 60 this distance he's going 50 degree He's going to grip down the club slightly because we don't want to be gripping at the full length of the I'm club. Not quite the steel, I'm just on the kind of the logo in on the grip. Yeah, on the logo, it might be golf pride, it might be whatever you've got. You're a little bit down to again to encourage that low point to a bit, be a bit higher. So we're catching the ball, not the sand here. And then we're not going to get the feet into the sand because that's going to lower our centre of gravity. That's going to encourage you to catch it heavy as well. So James is going to take his normal stance with his new shoes. My new shoes. I'm actually going to perch on here as though I'm on a cart path. Ooh. And I always recall Tiger Woods saying the lesser of the two evils here is to catch it slightly thin rather than slightly fat because you'll still get a little bit of backspin from the friction on the sand. Yeah, so James is not going to go too much down into the sand. He's a little bit down on the grip and he's going to play this one with a square club face. Pretty good. Caught just before the ball, that's run down onto the front edge. Still short though. Still short. So that's what we see a lot from people. And I've got another option here which we're going to get James to try, which is out with a 50 and in with an 8 iron. So we're going to go 8 iron and people think, well, it's only 70 yards. But we're going to open this 8 iron as we would if we had a 60 in here. It's a little bit longer of a club, but it's going to take a lot more loft on it. It's going to come out a lot more direct and towards the flag. So James is going to open this up exactly the same setup see for me this feels a little bit easier as well because i still have the shaft length for me i felt like on that 50 degree i was gripping down it i'd lost my posture and that's why i felt like i caught it that bit heavy it wasn't a bad shot but it's not as good hopefully as that one that one's perfect and it's going to run that could end up being really close actually go it's landed a bit softer than what I thought, but... It did, it did, landed a little bit soft, but you see there, like James said, his posture then was a little bit taller as he would feel comfortable with. He was able to come out, still had enough height, but then it was going more forward. So that did land a little bit soft, but that's a lot closer to the edge of the green. And that's the one. That is the one we wanted, isn't it? And that's I'm, delightful. And I'm probably right in the way, but that has landed just on the front edge of the green, just ran just past the flag. But an eight iron there, so we've gone up drastically. We've not just got a 60 degree and thought, give this as much as we can. We've not then just gone a couple of wedges down. We've made it easy. We've gone all the way up to an eight iron, still opened it up, more direct, over the lip and on the green. And in fairness, this isn't a shot that people practice. No. And for me there, I was kind of the first shot, a bit random. Yeah. You never really practice this kind of shot. Second shot, an easier shot to play, still not quite perfection. And then the third shot, obviously once you've ingrained it in a bit so one thing i'd say is practice these shots as well and it's more than likely going to help you yeah practice these shots give it a go out on the golf course maybe drop a couple in but you see there even the first shot with the eight iron has gone much closer than a 50 the 50 would have had to be perfect as you can see there he's done this before it's not my first rodeo but i did realize i walked pretty much all the way around this uh, bunker <laughs> tell you what not much there. I think it's rock solid. I think it's uh, frozen. Is it that cut? Yeah, it's ice there, look. Right, right there was James Robinson in his element. Anything we can do for a video. It is frozen, that, isn't it? It is frozen. We'll show you the frozen puddle behind it. Right, guys, so the second bunker <laughs> shot we're looking at here is a 30-yard bunker shot. So a lot of people here get told, and you'll see online, OK, maybe just drop down to a wedge or a pitching wedge, try and play the bump and run. And what I see a lot of the times there is people decelerate, don't commit to it, and it just dribbles on to around about 40 foot. So James here has got his, first of all, you've got your... Lob wedge. Lob wedge, which again, on this occasion, I'm going to say is... 
taking good that, aren't you? Yeah. So it's up and out there. He's been able to put plenty of loft on there. James could there just make a bigger swing. So really commit to these shots. If you're going to use a 60, which I would suggest for this one, really open it up, really give it the full swing. And there, that's yeah. you can send it really positive. That had plenty of flight on it landed soft and it's come to six foot if i can add something there the key there is the speed so many times i've given bunker lessons over the years believe it or not and the one thing i say to people is comment on this bunker shot and they go sorry, <laughs> sorry chris and they go well you've swung really really fast yes i have because the idea that the sand slows down the club head people don't comprehend that so yes you're going to use the bounce it's going to glide through the sand yep but you need the speed to be able to get through there, present the loft of the ball, get it up in the air. I'm quite happy with both of those, to be honest. You take them and make sure you keep the speed like James said there, and we can make sure that we get enough distance and commit. A lot of times people in the bunker, like James said there, don't keep the speed. They're really, you're not committing to the shot. We know that off the tee, if we don't commit to the shot, we end up hitting a, a wild tee shot and it's just guided down there. Here, James has switched to his 56 here. He can make a little bit of a smaller swing. Still going to open the face up though. Still going to be plenty of loft there. We need to get it over this lip. And he's still going to commit to being fast through the ball. Good. Oh, that's the best one, isn't it? The best one? There that's you go. That's really annoying. It is rather annoying, but it's great for me because don't use a 60. But trial and error there, guys. See which one you're more comfortable with, but don't go down to a pitching wedge. Don't go down to a 50 because I see too many people decelerate, have no speed. The ball dribbles out or comes back in. And now James is going to show you the water feature. Look at that. People aren't believing how frozen this is, but uh, we'll take that. Right, let's now have a look at a short side of bunker shot, what we need to do in there. And James bunker wizard. Enjoy this one. <sighs> what an action. Right, so third and final one is, again, up against the face. So we need a lot of loft here. James has gone nicely up close to the edge of this bunker. I've he's, got 56, is that enough? He's got his 56, we're going to see. For the distance, I'd say this is 20, 20 yards, I would say. Yeah. We're going to see if we can do this or we can be more committed to uh, your favourite. 60. 60, let's have a look. So the main thing for me here is that you keep your spine angle into the bank. You don't try and lean back and catch the equator of the ball straight into the leading edge. We see that so often. Another. Fantastic. I think I might be Spanish or South African, the way I'm hitting these. Take your pick. Probably not you South You happy with African that or more? Moment. I'm happy with that. Right, so 56 again. One thing I've noticed here as well, the ball's actually above my feet as well because of the gradient of the bunker, and that's why it's gone left because of the face plane tilt of the loft. So I'm going to aim right on this one and try and play a similar shot. Oh. That's disappointing. Yeah, so fell back on that one, we can see that. I feel like I fell back on that because the sand came in my face on the first one. So I've tried to like come away from it. Come away from it, afraid of the, uh, afraid of the sand. Shall I go 60 this time? Let's go 60, let's put a little bit more speed into this. Again, it's on an upslope, so we know that's going to create loft. So I feel, yeah, this. I thought this is too much now from the upslope, but we'll play it anyway. And this feels too much, so again, trial and error here. Again, it's gone left because of the... The gradient but that's two out of three which aren't bad i mean who the thing is as well they all got out didn't they trivia who sings two out of three ain't bad well i mean you give it up there right not bad shots those two and again a lot of speed comes out left because of the tilt but the 60 there you have to put a lot more speed into the, it the on shot there. is 56 all day there i've attempted to try that with a 50 as well because plenty of help there to get the dynamic loft isn't it in relation to the, the angle of the ground but yeah so guys i'd like to thank our great explanation demonstration in james robinson he would still pass his pga exams which is the good news some pressure on that to be fair because there's no retakes in this game is there there's no retake so good shots but three different shots there we started with the long dreaded bunker shot which we, we saw james favored the a time we gave you two different options there we moved into the 30 40 yard bunker shot and shown how it's really about committing to the shot you can go 56 you can go 60 you find trial and error which one's best for you and then we showed you even if you're up against the lip a 56 can still work you don't have to go straight to 60 think about that the slopes adding a little bit more loft james also had the ball above his feet which sent those left 
so he knows that he'd need to adjust for that if he was out playing a competition. So guys, hopefully those tips have helped you, and we'll see you again later in the week.